All righty, I thought we'd get started. So uh, welcome, uh, good evening. Uh, my name's Todd Abrahamson, superintendent here at Okaboji, and this is kind of our first uh, parent-student orientation to kind of educate you and inform you on how dual credit works in high schools, uh, the opportunities for your students, and to learn more. Um, this is something I'm very passionate about as a superintendent and all my other districts. I really promote uh, the dual credit uh, enrollment for our high school kids. Uh, I've been in districts where kids actually got their AA degree while they're in high school. So not only when they walked across the stage for their high school diploma, they had an AA degree from that uh, local community college, whether it was in the, just in the arts and uh, academics going on to a four year or they got into a career track with uh, career and technical education. And it's something I like to uh, educate parents about. Um, and when we say free tuition, it is free tuition to parents uh, because under the Iowa Code of Supplemental Weighted Dollars, uh, school districts uh, get reimbursed X amount of dollars. It depends on how many kids are in the class, how many periods of the day they're taking that. But there is a formula that's been around for decades in Iowa on the supplemented weighted dollars. So this has been around forever. And so it's our job as K-12 is to educate our parents and our students on how that works, but also to provide every opportunity for our kids. Um, here at Okaboji, we pride ourselves on the pioneering pathways for every student, and this is part of that. And I've always believed if we can get kids into a fast track of college or a career, that's a good thing, not only for their parents and saving tuition dollars, because how many actually have kids in college right now? Yeah, uh, I had two that went through. I have one going after this year, and uh, tuition costs are just skyrocketing. And here's an opportunity to uh, help parents and students save dollars, um, graduate earlier, and get into the job market or the careers much faster. And so employers um, are begging for opportunities, particularly on the career and technical side in our community colleges in Iowa, in my opinion, uh, throughout the United States and Iowa do a magnificent job uh, in what they provide uh, for our students and for our parents. So every community college I've worked with in Iowa has been outstanding. Iowa Lakes, we have a great partnership with them and we just wanna continue to enhance that and you're gonna learn a lot more from uh, Isle Lakes and then afterwards uh, informational out there. So um, this is really to inform uh, you as parents and students, but also to really connect with your counselor, high school counselor and high school principal, uh, wherever you may be, but here at Okaboji. So uh, as you look at these tracks and the opportunities, um, how does that fit into your schedule? Um, because it's our job to make sure we make those schedules fit for you, not for us. That's my philosophy. Um, because we're here to serve you as parents and students and whatever opportunity we can do that it can be done. And uh, um, I know our school board is very excited about enhancing this partnership and also giving, providing our kids more opportunities. So we'll look at, you know, those transportation opportunities if kids can't get somewhere or whatever they pick and choose. But more tonight's more about informational and the information that we get back from you and the college and things you'd like to see your child do that helps us plan as we uh, move into the future, whether this spring or next year, and to provide those opportunities. Um, so with that, um, I want to say thank you again. Um, Indian Hills is here. I'm going to turn it over to Carrie and uh, our Owl Lakes. The reason I said Indian Hills, Carrie actually knows a good friend of mine, uh, Karen um, Swanson who I worked extensively with at Indian Hills, and I've done this a few times with Carrie. So Iowa Lakes, but she knows my good friend Karen. Um, so, but they do an outstanding job. They're like their liaison, Carrie's like their liaison, and does a lot more, but between the high schools and the community college. So I just wanna thank them for taking time. I know their busy schedule, they have instructors here and professors, and then like I said, informational booths after we're done. So. Thank you very much, Carrie, and I'll let her introduce her team, but again, sit back, learn, and 
If you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. And when we're out there at the informational tables, if you need additional information how things work, just let us know. Okay? So welcome. Thank you, Todd. Um, like Todd said, I'm Carrie Hampy from Iowa Lakes Community College, not Indian Hills Community College. <laughs> and tonight we just have uh, some general information for you guys. I'm in high school partnership, so that means we take care of anything that has to do with high schools. I also have Cheyenne Metzger with us, who's in our admissions. We have Jackie Luer and Summer Nielsen, who are work-based learning, so they're going to kind of tell you a little bit about what that program is and how your high school students can um, benefit from that. We have Steve Pelzer with financial aid and Tony Condon with scholarship. So we are going. We have a lot of information. I know that. There's going to be a lot that you're going to see on the PowerPoint that you're probably not going to remember. Um, but just we just want to make sure that you can see it. And then, you know, please contact any one of our offices for any more information. Emily Schaefer has our information, Brian Downing also. So if there's anything tonight that you have more questions on, please let us know. Okay. See, I'm probably not going to get this thing to work. There we go. There we go. Yeah, that's now that's a whole other guy in there. Um, like Todd said, senior year plus is really what governs um, our department through the legislator and the Department of Ed. So this has been around for probably about ten years. Senior year plus has. This is where you know school districts are provided with a variety of options to enhance students' high school experience. 2008, I guess Senior Year Plus was actually created. That encompasses a lot of different areas, but all having to do with uh, students who were in high school. <laughs> I know Jackie Wright in here. Yeah, sorry. Um, so it does have, it's a comprehensive guide. If you're ever interested in looking at all the rules for this, you can find this on the Iowa Department of Ed's website, just under Senior Year Plus, and it will give you specifically all of the guidelines that we as a community college and the K-12s have to follow. Um, let's see, next one. College credits are opportunities to help gap between completing high school and start a college. Joint enrollment, dual credit, concurrent enrollment, all those terms basically mean the same thing. And it's uh, where a student can get high school credit and college credit for the same course. Um, just a little bit of research does show that students who go through uh, dual credit, concurrent enrollment, tend to finish college at a higher rate than students who do not end up with some sort of degree, whether it's um, a two-year degree or a four-year degree or beyond. So it really is, there's statistics out there that will show that it's really a good thing for kids to start experiencing college courses while in college. Okay. Through our department, we have four different ways where you can kind of earn college credit. Career academies, concurrent enrollment, contracted courses, and articulations. And I'm just going to kind of briefly go through either each one of those. So on the career academies, we have five locations here in our five-county area where students can access a career academy. Algona High School, Emmitsburg Campus, Esterville Campus, Spencer High School, and the Spirit Lake Campus, the Lakes Academy. So all five of those are available to any student in the five-county area. At the Algona High School, we have two different programs there that are career academies. We have automotive technology, digital, social, and broadcast production. Those instructors in the high school are employed by, I they're an Iowa Lakes instructor, and they're teaching the Iowa Lakes curriculum. And at the Emmersburg campus, we have nine of them. As you can see, ag, auto tech, auto collision, construction, farm equipment, marine, power sports, and welding. All of those run from 8 to 10, Monday through Friday. So students can come in 
They're in labs and classes with uh, regular college students. And uh, these programs are all taught by Iowa Lakes instructors that have the programs there at this campus. And then at Esterville, we have computer programming, criminal justice, environmental, human services, disabilities, graphic, design, electrical, engineering, and HVAC. And again, those programs also run Monday through Friday between 8 and 10. And they're usually, this one is, these are usually two semesters. Some of the ones at Emmitsburg run four semesters. Students that go through these programs get an average between probably 12 and 20 college credits that go directly into these programs. So if they take this as a junior and or a senior, and they can usually finish, like I think with welding, they could probably finish in two semesters after that. Sometimes it just lightens the student's load. Maybe instead of 18 credits, they could take 12 credits. You know, there's a various different ways that it works into the program. And then at Spencer and at Spirit Lake Lakes Academy, they both have health sciences programs. Again, these run from between the 8 and 10, and these instructors are also Iowa Lakes instructors teaching the curriculum. Okay, Contracted courses. That just generally means it's either going to be taken face-to-face -face on our campus or online. So these are just an example of some of the courses that Okaboji High School students are taking right now this semester. And you can see they range from everything from intro to lit to western civ. These courses that are available through contracted courses, again, either online or coming face-to-face -to, -face to us, is open to anything that's in our Iowa Lakes catalog. So if you go in there and you see a course that may not be face-to-face, -face, it's online, it, it's available for the student to take. Iowa Lakes is in a consortium with either nine or ten other community colleges, which allows us to offer quite a wide variety of courses for that student. So a contract, it just means online or face-to-face. -face. So you could go to the Spirit Lake campus, the Esterville campus, Emmitsburg, any of them in our five-county area, and take those face-to-face. -face, or you could stay right here at the school and do an online class. So again, these are just an example of some of the students that are taking right this year. And then concurrent enrollment. Technically, that term means that it's taught in the high school by a qualified teacher. So these are the courses that are offered here at Okaboji with qualified instructors that meet the same standards as our instructors at the college. So we have some arts and science, we have stats, Calc 1 and Calc 2, and then we have in CTE, we have trade and industry welding. So those are taught right here at the high school. Students don't have to leave the building. They can take those there. And then articulation. This tends to be very underused, but it is part of how you can get um, credit. You can, if you take a minimum, it has to match 80% of the curriculum. In order to receive the credit, though, you do have to attend Iowa Lakes after um, one semester, then the credit does appear on your transcript. This tends to be very underused anymore because dual credit is a, a much smoother uh, process and it makes sure like you know our classes would transfer you know to other community college or universities where articulation does not okay so that's just kind of really a, a brief overview of what dual credit is again like Todd said it's free to parents um, we have a contract with the school districts that we, you know, a binding contract that we go into where, you know, we build the school district on this. Great opportunity um, for students. I think at our last um, state meeting, Iowa is one of the leaders in the nation actually on concurrent enrollment. So we kind of, you know, have been really ahead of the game on this. This has grown probably tenfold in at least the last probably ten years. So. It's a really great opportunity for students to really get a taste of what a college course is. One other thing through Senior Year Plus I wanted to mention, courses are available to students through 9 through 12. You know, there, so there are some ninth graders that may be able to take a college course. Typically, it's, you know, usually you're a junior or senior when you take it, but according to Senior Year Plus, you are allowed 9 through 12 for that. So, again, just lots of different opportunities that are available. Okay. Jackie? Or? Well, hi, 
I'm Jackie, and this is Summer. We are with the Workspace Learning um, Program. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah? Okay. Um, and what we do, our job, is to make sure that your students have a plan after high school. So what we do to make sure that happens is set up job shadows, um, worksite tours, mock interviews, career panels, um, career fairs, classroom speakers. Um, some of the students do internships, and then the big events that we do are, some of them are um, Game of Life, Aviation Day, Career Day, CTE Day. Um, we do a lot of job shadows. How many, you guys, maybe one of you guys went out recently? Yeah, what did you guys do? What? Oh, Game of Life? Yep. So Game of Life is uh, financial literacy. So you guys, they uh, went and learned about budgeting and <laughs> cost of living. Um, what did you guys take away from that? Yeah. So they learned about bills and um, how much it costs for insurance and groceries and um, stuff like that throughout the day. Um, and then we do a lot of job shadows. So far this year, we've run, done about 250. Um, did any of you go on, on job shadows? No? Why don't you take it over? What'd you do again? <laughs> the Dickinson County Animal Clinic. Awesome. For vet tech? Yeah? Cool. So the students get to tell us what they want to do in their f or what they think they want to do in their future, and then we get to set up job shadows for them to go and see if they like it. Um, so one girl that we've worked with, this is just an example, one, but one girl that we've worked with thought she wanted to be a vet tech, found and determined that she wanted to be a vet tech, went and did a job shadow at the vet, saw blood, fainted, can't be vet tech. <laughs> so we move on with that and then we just keep moving and so, the, so they are ready when they graduate. So we partner this year with about four, over 430 local businesses so we can match the student with the career that they think they're interested in. So again, when they go on their job shadow, they have a good idea whether or not they like that area. Um, they're able to go on more than one. Um, and like I said, we have a lot of businesses we work with, partner with, and more, you know, more, more of them all the time are getting involved and wanting students there. They're really excited about having students come and learn their field. Um, they're helping them, they're answering questions, helping them figure out what what kind of career they want to be in, want to be in, or what they're interested in. They answer a lot of questions, give them a lot of good information, um, so we can easily pair a student to a career that they think they're interested in. Um, with that. Um, sometimes we have kids who, like recently I had a medieval history professor. I'm like, where am I going to find that around here? So we actually set up a Zoom meeting with um, a professor from the University of Iowa. And they Zoomed and they got to talk about their career. So we can make things happen even if they don't seem realistic. We can do our darndest to help you. No, I think that's about all we have, um, basically what our program is, is just pairing kids with uh, career opportunities and get, getting information so they have an idea of what they think they want to get into. You guys have any questions?
I can add a little bit on that is too. Um, as far as apprenticeships, um, work, I'm currently working with some employer groups here, um, particularly if uh, students are a junior or senior, particularly their senior year. Uh, in my last district, we set up apprenticeships. Um, what, what was really nice, we uh, hooked up with a plumbing company and an electric company, and what they did is uh, took these kids on and they had to do a 90-day apprenticeship kind of to see if they cut the mustard. And then if they did, what they did is they put them on a wage and then paid for their schooling. And then they signed a contract and they had to work for them three to four years. Um, so that's something that we would like to work on here because some employer groups have, have reached out to us on some of these apprenticeships. But I gotta be kind of in that 17 to 18 year range um, but we do have uh, employer groups that have reached out to us about that apprenticeship. And our high school, Emily and Brian, do a nice job with uh, internships and job shadows here now. So we've gotten the foundation for that. Now we just want to go to that next next level with some of these apprenticeships. Hope that answers. But yeah, Carrie's right. But yes, it can be done. Um, and because it's very difficult right now to find electricians and plumbers. The baby boomers are more and more are retiring. And a lot of these, uh, they'd like to either sell their companies or give it to somebody and they don't have anybody. So what they're doing is really reaching out to the K-12 sector, particularly the high school on these apprenticeships so they can keep this trade going. And, it, and that's the thing for kids. If you don't know what you wanna do, if that's an, they, these jobs pay well electricians, plumbers, mechanical, machinists. Um, just so think about things that you're interested in doing, coding. Uh, it's amazing what these jobs are paying now and on a two-year degree, sometimes less. So uh, that's why this is important. It's always been a passion, of not just mine, but just of employer groups. And thing is we wanna develop a workforce and also to keep you in our communities as well. <laughs> That's the thing, too, so. Um, so whenever you guys get a kid that brings home a job shadow application, just make sure you fill it out with them, um, and then we'll get that all set up. Same thing if you see any events that are happening, like Aviation Day or Game of Life, CTE Day, Career Day, anything like that, send the students our way. Um, and exposure is the best way, so. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact us. Um, I think they typically do it in junior year, correct, with Angela White? Yep. We've, uh, ILCC's been great um, in helping us with all these partnerships. And one thing that we've set up um, in the last year or two is to really try to focus in with our juniors and seniors, especially getting them out, as Mr. Abraham Hampson said, out into the community and finding out, you know, what do they want to do or what don't they want to do. So what we did this fall was um, our juniors all had an opportunity to get out and spend about a half a day doing a job shadow um, with one of the local businesses that they were interested in. And then with the advent of our um, J term this year, all of our seniors are gonna be out doing two weeks of an internship um, in a business of their choice. We're really excited about that. And we really wanna encourage students to get out there and try different job shadows. And then if they're finding that they, they've done an internship their senior year and they wanna continue with that, say in the spring and see if there's a way to work that into their schedule, we're more than happy to meet them on that. So that's kind of the flow of how we have things set up right now, but uh, we really welcome the opportunity to get kids out there and, and have them try these different job shadows. So, thank you.
our college and career class that Angela White teaches for most of our sophomores, some kids wait and take it their junior year, is kind of that entry point into having a lot of these tours that they talked about. And then also she's helping coordinate a ton with ILCC with the, the job shadows. So um, we work as a team, but certainly we have a lot of contacts and, and we think of that sophomore year being kind of an opportunity to get a lot of exposure to what's out there take different assessments, have a lot of guest speakers, and then kind of ramp up to your junior and senior year with actually getting out in the community. As a matter of fact, I think most of our juniors um, will have the opportunity this spring to do another job shadow in preparation for the internship their senior year. So any questions, Okaboji specific on that? Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Cheyenne Metzger and I'm an enrollment coach um, in the admissions department. Uh, Jason McKinney is usually the representative that comes to your high school, um, but I'm filling in with him s for him tonight. Um, he's also our assistant basketball coach, so he has uh, those obligations. Uh, but um, I am on the Emmicksburg campus, so if you or your student are interested in any of the programs there, I would be a good point of contact. Okay, I'm just going to kind of go through our admissions process um, that we suggest. So usually the first step is to visit, and since a lot of you guys are close, we still suggest that you come visit the campus that you're interested in attending um, to visit with the faculty members, uh, get a campus tour, um, and talk to myself or another enrollment coach one-on-one. -on -one. Um, then the next step would be to apply. Um, you can do that online, or we also have paper applications. Um, it's pretty simple. And then um, housing, since you're really close, a lot of our students around here wouldn't um, have housing, but you still are more than welcome to stay on campus. We have housing at the Emmicksburg, Estville, and Spencer campuses. And then the last step would be to um, file financial aid and fill out scholarships, and um, they're both here to talk about that, so I won't get into that so much. Um, and like I said, um, we always encourage you to visit. Uh, we do have visit days, um, and we have them at the Emmicksburg or the Estville campus, or um, you can also schedule individual visits at any time. Um, and we have our next one coming up will be in January, and it's on a Saturday. And that one's a really fun one because it's called Jam the Gym. Uh, you, we give out a scholarship, we give out prizes, and then also you're welcome to watch our men's and women's basketball uh, take on Kirkwood that afternoon. Uh, here's some just some quick facts about Iowa Lakes. I also have this postcard um, if you would like it. Um, and some of you have maybe received this in the mail this past month. Uh, so we always like to say, um, we always have small class sizes, one of our um, big selling points. Um, a lot of our residents are from Iowa, of course. Um, and then we give out a lot of scholarships. Our tuition is low, um, things like that. Um, and then, as you see, that's another way of that we're a great value um, compared to the big um, private, um, the big universities and then the private schools, um, our average tuition and costs are a lot lower than both of those. Um, we have a ton of different programs. Uh, these are college transfer areas. Uh, so these programs would be, you would do two years or probably less if you guys are taking college classes now. Um, and these are different areas that you can take it in. Um, so these would be you take your general education classes and then kind of concentrate in those different areas and then transfer on to a four-year university. Here's some more. I have about three sides of these, just different areas that you can go into. And one more. And then we have a ton of co um, career programs. So these programs are more designed that um, you do the program and then you guys can go right into that workforce. Some of them you still can go on if you would like, but um, two years with us and then you can go into the workforce and start making money. Um, so a lot of different areas of that as well. If you guys have any questions, um, otherwise if you do have special individual questions, I will be outside, I have a table out there um, after we're done in here. Hi there, my name is Steve Fells. I'm the Director of Financial Aid at Iowa Lakes. I'm just going to kind of cover how you, you know, people always ask, how, does, how can I pay for college? It's, it's so expensive. So I'm going to kind of go through some things. Uh, when you're, so FAFSA is the thing you want to fill out. It's, it's a free application for federal student aid. It's a, it's a FSA, FF, FAFSA.ed.gov. If you go to like .com or something, 
they'll they'll file it for you, but they'll charge you. So it's free. That's the that's the first word of the thing. So you'll have to have that, and you you can start filling out a FAFSA for any senior there after October first of, of their senior year. October first of senior year, you can start filling out a FAFSA. From there, they, that's how you determine what you're eligible for. Um, if you were filling out this year, see if you're senior this year, you're going to use your 2016 taxes to fill it out. Next year, it'll be the 2017 taxes. It gives you a EFC, which is expected family contributions. That's a number that colleges use to determine what they can offer you. Um, I get a question all the time about dependency versus independent. Uh, I'm not going to pay for my child to go to school. I'm not going to support them in that way. Um, but the federal government says, unless you meet one of these requirements, you have a 24-year-old, you're married, you have a child, your veteran has served active duty, or from where the court deemed homeless, those are the only ones that are going to be considered independent. Otherwise, you're going to have your student is a dependent student. So, um, so that that is the question I get a lot of. But but that you know that's where they, they the federal government says you have to meet one of these requirements, or you're not going to be. Uh, you're not going to be able to file as independent. Grants, grants are the is the best thing you get at college or to help pay for college. It's called gift aid. They're they're need based. Um, there's federal grants, the Pell Grant, SEOG Grant, Teach Grant. Those are all federal grants. Um, Pell Grant is a, is the biggest one they award every year. This year, the for Pell, if you get a full, if you receive a full Pell Grant, it's Five thousand seven hundred twenty dollars, I believe, a for the year. Um, teach grants are for people going into teaching. Those turn into if if you get a teach grant because you were originally going into teaching, change your change your mind, you're not going to be a teacher anymore. It becomes a student loan. Um, state grants, the state grants are based on uh, at least at, at the community college level, they're program specific. So if you're going into some of the trades. Uh, wind turbine welding some of those those are those are state grants they're need based so that but they're nice uh, programs to to be they're, they're a nice grant to help pay for college you, if, to be eligible for the state grants for this coming year if you're a senior you have to have your FAFSA completed by July 1st so you have to have your FAFSA completed by July 1st to be considered for any state grants whatever year you're filling it out for Federal direct loans, that's that's what, uh, you know, people always talk about student loans. That's what a federal direct loan. Freshman for the maximum for the year is $5,500. Um, for a sophomore, it goes up $1,000, it's $6,500. People, um, it doesn't matter if you're going to Iowa Lakes, if you're going to Grinnell College, which is very expensive, you're still only el you're only eligible for these, these amounts. Um, there's two different types, subsidized and unsubsidized. Subsidized means that uh, the federal government pays the interest while you're in college. Uh, the unsubsidized starts accruing the interest as soon as you take it out. So this year, and, and they, that interest rate changes. This year it's 4.45%. Um, no discharge. So if, if you were to file bankruptcy, you're still going to have to pay your student loans back. Um, there's different ways to pay them back. There's standard, which is what most people do. That's you know this much a month for 10 years. Income based, so if, if you're making less than what you would hope for, you can start doing income based, and that, then that could spread it out and lower your payments for you. There are other options that way too. So, scholarships a big, a great way to pay for uh, college. When you go get ready, to when you decide where you're going, you want to find out their scholarship deadline. Ours is Tony will talk about. Um, some of the bigger universities are right now for, for next fall. Um, a lot of times they, they they give scholarships on ACT based on your ACT score. You, you know, if you, you have to complete a uh, I don't know where unsubsidized came in there, but you have to complete your FAFSA. The local school districts, and, um, local areas and school districts give out a lot of money for high school seniors. Make sure you fill out your scholarship applications for that. I always tell a student, you know, if you get a thousand dollar scholarship, it usually maybe took you an hour to fill out your your application. What what job are you getting that that pays a thousand dollars an hour? So it's definitely worth filling it out. Um, and you know you get scholarships for it's amazing. You go to school, you get a scholarship for music if you're into music, either band or chorus. My daughter got a nice scholarship going for singing at Briar Cliffs. I mean, so interest some of your interests. Check out the colleges, see what they have. They might offer scholarships for that. Um, 
um, other sources to pay for college. A lot of colleges will offer a payment plan, so say you owe, you know, whatever, you can pay it monthly. Students could work, do work study. Work studies are jobs that are either on campus or usually near campus, and it's a federal program that helps, you know, you, they get paid just like any other job, or they could just take a part-time job. Um, alternative loans are loans that are offered by usually the big comp big uh, banks, Wells Fargo, Iowa Student Loan, there's uh, Sally Mae. Those are ones that most students need to co sign for that, so they're going to either have a parent or a grandparent or aunt and uncle, whatever. Um, and those rates vary, the fees on them vary. So you, you, if when you go, if you think you need to go to that route, you know, check with the s check with the banks to see what they're offering. Um, Parent PLUS loan is also through the is, is similar to the student loan, the direct student loan. It's run through the same program. Um, this year it's 7%. The parent actually takes the loan out for the student. So, you know, that the parent is actually on the hook for the loan, not the student. Just, just remember that, you know, don't borrow extra money if you don't need it because you pay for your college if, with other ways if you can help it. I'm going to give Tony the scholarship. Good evening. So I work in the foundation office at Iowa Lakes, and we take care of all the scholarships. And um, so for the past three years, we've given out over a million dollars a year in scholarships. That translates into a huge benefit for our students. So we talked about the dual credit. How many students in here either have or will plan to take dual credit classes during their high school career? Okay, so if you apply at Iowa Lakes and fill out our application and you've taken between three and 13 dual credit courses, we're gonna give you $500 scholarship. That's the only qualifier you have. Fill out the application, you're good to go for $500. Uh, do any of, our, any of our parents in the room, are you Iowa Lakes alumni? Thank you very much. Your student will get $500 by filling out our application as well. So we have some automatic scholarships like those, and we, we have about 150 total scholarships that are administrated by one application on our website. Many colleges are this way, so you just have to check with which whatever college you're interested in to find out what those are. Um, oh, whoops, I went the wrong way. I didn't learn anything from the people ahead of me. Okay, so in 2016-17, which is la the last academic year, we awarded $992,000 in scholarships for Iowa Lakes. These are academic scholarships. They don't include any of our athletic scholarships. 81% of the students who applied for scholarships received at least one scholarship. So the odds are really great at Iowa Lakes and the average award was $2,469. So as Steve indicated, that application process takes you an hour or less. Where else are you gonna make this kind of money in an hour? It's a great benefit for our students. Our five county area students do very well. We have five large endowed scholarships. One of those is the Alby Scholarship Fund. It, uh, it covers any student attending the Esterville campus of Iowa Lakes. So any of you students that are here, if you attend Iowa Lakes, if you attend the Esterville campus, you'd be eligible for those Albee scholarships. Um, we have many other scholarships that are available, um, so it, it really helps out a lot. Um, some of the parents in the room, is, will, will your, are you looking forward to your first child going to college? Anybody? Not necessarily looking forward to it, but it's going to happen, right? Okay. All right. And uh, anybody in here will be looking forward to sending their last child to college. Yeah, there you go. The, the feeling's a lot different, isn't it? Yeah. I'm on my third of four, so I'm, I'm working towards that. But um, we talk about the dual enrollment, and I just want to share a story. My oldest daughter uh, graduated high school in 2003. She took dual credit courses in high school, and back then we didn't really know what it was all about. We just, oh yeah, that's fine. Go ahead and take as many as you can. And school district's paying for it, so we don't care. And I was working for the college at the time, so I didn't have a lot of that knowledge. And um, she received her AA degree the week before she graduated high school. 
that's great for dad's point of view because that's two years of college I don't have to pay for. From her point of view, it worked out great because she transferred directly to you and I, got her teaching degree, and was hired as a teacher before she turned 21, which means as she goes through her career, she's going to retire at least two years ahead of any of her peers. That's a great advantage to have, all because of the dual enrollment. So wonderful thing. My oldest son took dual enrollment as well. He went through Iowa Lakes Aviation Program. And um, he didn't stay with aviation. He's an engineer down in Wichita, Kansas right now. And he travels the world and does glider competitions. So where you'll go from Iowa Lakes, you never know. You could stay in the area, which we all hope you do, but, but it really opens a lot of doors for folks. And we can help you pay for that with the scholarships. Um, Everything on our scholarship application is online, so it's on our website. And uh, if you have any questions on that, I'll be out in the uh, uh, other room when we're done, and, and I'll help you out with that process. All right, that kind of wraps up the presentation now you get to have more one-on-one -on -one out front but I just want to close by just telling a couple stories as well as just I had two older kids that took a ton of dual credit classes and it knocked a year off uh, their college so they graduated earlier and got into the workforce uh, Logan will graduate with uh, uh, quite a few uh, dual credit courses and then hopefully my Lene my youngest Hopefully graduates, right? No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but long story short is um, what I have found out about this opportunity, if, if you don't know what you want to do, you can take advantage of this and kind of explore those avenues. And sometimes you think, hey, this is what I really want to do. And then when you get into those courses, you're like, uh-uh. It's better to do it while you're in high school because when you're in college, your parents are paying for that debt. So you get the opportunity um, while you're here um, to kind of play and see, hey, this is the career path I want. And the other piece is, is what I'm really dedicated to is the CTE side. I, I love the career technical. If you know you're not going on to a four-year, and I have nothing against four-year. I went through four-year. I just wish I would have had opportunities like this when I was in school. I think my career path would have done something different. Really say, hey, get with your counselor, principal, your family. This is what I want to do. I, I want to be a welder. I want to be in nursing, a machinist, aviation, whatever it may be. Um, get into those career paths and take advantage of that now while you're in high school. Um, I was part of a development of a career academy, Keokuk County Career Academy, Indian Hills, and we built a close to a three million dollar uh, facility uh, in Sigourney School District, and five districts fed into that. And we had great partnerships. It was a three-year design, and my job as a superintendent is looking at labor shed studies, wages, employment opportunities. So in Southeast Iowa, seven out of ten jobs relate to manufacturing. Well, when you look at the labor shed studies up here in northwest Iowa, it's more retail than manufacturing. Every region's different. Um, but Vermeer and Kinsey, which are huge companies, um, they donated all the welders and equipment, but they just started pulling kids out of our career academy in the welding because it's a two-year cert certification. And they were starting at 20 to 25 bucks an hour um, and had jobs before they graduate high school. So, but that was a passion of theirs and that's a good wage. So there's many of opportunities out there through the community college route. And if you're not going to community college, going to four year, take advantage of the dual credit because um, a lot, most of those credits transfer. And if you have questions, that's again what your counselor is very important to do to help you through that process and working with admissions and one website you can look at is transology.com. And you can look on your college transcript um, and see if those credits will transfer to pretty much any college or university. So it's transology.com. 
when you have kids in college, you learn this, these different things. So if it's your first one, just transology.com. But get with your counselor um, and to help you with that because most people are like, well, will these transfer? Uh, a lot of these credits transfer, particularly to the regents. Um, private schools, a lot of them do. If they don't transfer right into a major, they're going to transfer into an elective. I've been through it. So um, it's just educating yourself. And if you have questions, get with your high school counselor, principal, people like here. So, um, but uh, thanks for coming. We'll continue to do this. We're actually going to do another one, one in the spring for our eighth graders. So eighth graders as they're coming into high school have an opportunity to understand so parents understand the opportunities that are there for uh, college and I call it free tuition because it is uh, to parents so uh, if you have questions uh, the booths are out there there's a lot of neat stuff that are set up uh, Emily uh, Mr. Downing's here uh, Owl Lakes Community College personnel myself um, but thanks again and just feel free to check it out out there and ask any questions, okay? Thank you.